Count up. Oh. The Jell-O program, coming to you from Hollywood, California, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens the program with Let's Have Another One. <laughs> Did you ever wake up on a sunshiny May morning and get a sudden attack of wanderlust? You want to lock the car, pile the kids into the car, and drive off for a carefree day in the country? But there's supper time to think of. Well, here's one swell time-saving idea. Jell-O for dessert. For Jell-O is magically quick and easy to prepare. It dissolves instantly, sets quickly, and there's nothing to go wrong. Why, you can get it ready before you leave in the morning, pop it into the refrigerator, and there's a grand, colorful, delicious dessert waiting for you when you get home. But best of all, Jell-O looks so lovely and tastes so good that it dresses up the simplest meal. All six colors glow with beauty, from the deep rose red that reminds you of fresh strawberries to the pale shimmering gold of lemon. And all six flavors bring you delightful refreshment. For Jell-O is chock full of extra rich flavor that rivals the real ripe fruit itself. So ask your grocer tomorrow for Jell-O. Look for the big red letters on the box. They spell Jell-O. one played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Charles G. Mortimer of General Foods, the sponsor of this program, happens to be visiting the coast. So without further ado, we take you to Jack Benny's home in Beverly Hills, where Jack is giving a dinner party in Mr. Mortimer's honor. Here we go. I look at you and what do I do? I can't speak, I can't sleep, I just sigh. I look at you, and all I can say is, my, my! Rochester, we should watch what you're doing. Uh, I want this finished before Mr. Charles G. Mortimer gets here. I'm doing the best I can, boys. Best you can. You started to give me this haircut 40 minutes ago. <laughs> you, you haven't even got the sides done. Well, when I get to Death Valley on top, I'll go faster. <laughs> Oh, my, my hair isn't so thin. I may have one little bald spot up there about the size of a quarter. Take a look in this mirror, boss. Inflation is set in. <laughs> Whoop! Rochester, that tickles. What are you doing back there? Your collar is frayed. I'm trimming that, too. <laughs> Never mind the collar. Just shave my neck and get this over with. That's probably Miss Livingston. Come in. Oh, hello, Mary. Well, what in the world's going on here? Rochester's giving me a haircut. Sit down and read that police gazette. I'll be with you in a minute. <laughs> Mr. Charles G. Mortimer ought to be here soon. He's certainly putting on the dog for our sponsor. Flowers all over the house, cigars on every table. Well? I can't understand why you're so worried about your option. He'll probably renew it. Mary, I'm not worried about my option. I do as much for any guest. Well, I'll be darned. Look at that picture you got over the fireplace. What about it? It used to be September morn, and now it's Mr. Mortimer. <laughs> now, wait a minute. That picture above my fireplace wasn't September morn. It was Napoleon at Waterloo. Well, he had a gorgeous figure. <laughs> oh, stop. Ooh, Rochester, be careful of that razor. Okay, where's the iodine, boss? Iodine? Did you cut me again? Rochester, did you cut me again? I'll just tighten your necktie. That'll stop it. <laughs> Never mind that. Put a Band-Aid on it. Okay, okay. And hurry up. Gee, I hope Mr. Mortimer will find the house all right. How can he miss it? You've got a welcome mat that covers the whole front lawn. Well, I think the occasion warrants it. There you are. I'm all through. Now, wait a minute, Rochester. Don't cheat. I want some bay rum on my face. Not today, boss. Rochester, do as I tell you. Well, if I use the bay rum, what are we going to have for the cocktails? <laughs> cocktails? Have you been putting bay rum in my cocktails? Boss, rum is rum, no matter what's in front of it. <laughs> well, I don't 
I want those kind of cocktails today. Mary, Mary, how do I look? Let me see. Gee whiz, look how Rochester trimmed your sideburns. <laughs> What's the matter with them? You look like Cesar Romero on one side and Waukegan Joe on the other. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, Rochester, take that razor and make them both Waukegan. Okay. Heavens, I, I hope that isn't Mr. Mortimer already. Come in. Oh, hello, Don. Hello, Jack. How are you, Mary? Hello, Don. Have a seat, Mr. Wilson. There's nobody ahead of you. Now, cut that out. <laughs> and listen, Rochester, after the party starts, if I catch you running around with your shoe-shining outfit, you're fired. <laughs> but there's a payment due on my yacht. I don't care if there is. The idea of buying a yacht at $2 a week. Well, it'll be 40 years before you own it. 43, I'm putting on a poop deck. <laughs> I don't care what you're putting on. I won't have you annoying my guests. Gee, I wish Don and the rest of the gang would get here. Don's right here. You just said hello to him. Oh, yes. Yeah. Sit down, Don. I mean, sit down, Don. He is sitting down. Oh, that's right. My goodness, Jack, but you're nervous today. I wouldn't worry about that option if I were you. Who's worried? Mr. Mortimer will sign you up. Don, that's not the reason I invited him over here. Who cares about my job? There are other things besides radio. Sure, with that haircut, you could bring back Waterville. <laughs> oh, stop with my haircut. Gee, I hope Mr. Mortimer likes the dinner tonight. Oh, he'll like it, Jack. Don't worry. Gee, I wish Don would get here. I'm here, Jack. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Say, Don... I want to be sure that Mr. Mortimer has a good time tonight. So after the party gets rolling, I wish you'd ask me to do my imitation of a trained seal. People scream whenever I do it at parties, you know? Oh, Jack, you're not going to bore your sponsor with that silly thing, are you? Silly? Why, that's the funniest bit I've done since I used to put a lampshade on my head and pretend I was drunk. <laughs> Remember? Don't you do that trick anymore where you stab yourself with a rubber knife and then pour ketchup on your shirt? No, that kind of stuff is dated. I'll do my seal. Now, don't forget, Don, when I say... Pardon me, Mr. Benny. May I see you for a minute? Oh, oh, it's you, Mrs. Nichols. This is my new cook, Mary, and a very good one, too. Now, what's on your mind, Mrs. Nichols? I need some butter. Can I have the key for the ice box? <laughs> Of course, of course. Well, that tops everything. A padlock on your icebox. Mary, I have $48 worth of caviar in there. No, no, answer the phone, Mary. Okay. Come on, Mr. Nichols. I'll open the icebox for you. Hello? Yes? Oh, Mr. Mortimer? Mr. Mortimer, give me that phone. Hello? Hello, Mr. Mortimer? This is Jack Benny. What? What? What's that? Oh, take it easy. He can hear you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What? Oh, oh, no. No, Mr. Mortimer. The party is tonight. Well, look, can't you go to the theater tomorrow or the next night? The next night? I've invited the whole gang. They'll be awfully disappointed. What about my butter? Wait, we may not need it. <laughs> well, look, Mr. Mortimer, we're all waiting for you, so do come over. You will? Oh, boy, that's swell. Tell him to come early and get a haircut. Now, come early, Mr. Mortimer, and get married. <laughs> Okay, Mr. Mortimer, see you soon. You're always welcome at the Chateau Benny. <laughs> well, bye-bye. Boy, I was worried there for a minute. What about that butter? Oh, yes. Come on, Mr. Nichols. Gee, I wish Don would get here. <laughs> Mrs. Nichols, you're doing swell. Gee, this stuff on the stove smells good, eh, Mary? Yeah. Sure is appetizing. What's the what's in this great big kettle over here, Mrs. Nichols? That's my laundry. <laughs> oh. Oh, yes. 
Mary, imagine doing her laundry and preparing dinner at the same time. Well, it's your own fault for getting a cook from Central Casting. I guess you're right. Well, come on, Mary. You forgot to lock the icebox. Oh, yes, thanks. <coughs> that must be Phil. Answer the door, Rochester! I'm shaving Mr. Wilson! Never mind that! Answer the door! Okay! Now, Mrs. Nichols, I'm leaving the dinner entirely in your hands, so do a good job. You can depend on me, kid. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Come along, Mary. Sure you don't want a shampoo, Mr. Wilson? Rochester, cut out that stuff and set the table. What do you think this is, a barber shop? That ain't the North Pole in the front yard. <laughs> Go out there and take it down. I warned you about that before. Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello, Zeke. Where'd you get the haircut? <laughs> Dennis, I'm certainly surprised at you. Well, gee, you look funny. Oh, I do, eh? Just for that, young man, you're not going to get one bit of caviar tonight. Remember that. Oh, I'll leave the kid alone, Jack. Why do you let Rochester cut your hair in the first place? Because he has nothing else to do. Oh, boss, calm down. <laughs> Oh, you don't work so hard. Instead of standing around here, go out in the kitchen and make a tray of hors d'oeuvres. Hors d'oeuvres? What, what do you mean? Make a ham sandwich and cut it in 40 pieces. <laughs> now get going. Okay. Barber, butler, chauffeur, gardener, and now I'm an hors d'oeuvre. Guy's always complaining when people are around. Open the door! Open up in there! Well, the maestro is here. Come in. Well, hello, Phil. Oh, How are you, Phil? Hello, Phil. Hiya, Hiya. Hiya. Hiya, Jackson. Where's the punch bowl? Right over there and take it easy. Hey, what happened to your head? Nothing happened to my head. I just got a haircut. Well, that's one thing a man can't do himself. You ought to get a barber. <laughs> I had a barber, but he didn't have his heart in it. Now, Phil, when our sponsor gets here, I want you to behave yourself and don't start pulling any of those corny cracks of yours. He won't like them. Can I tell the one about the old maid that set the bear trap? No. It's not a bit funny. Besides, it has no point to it. Just keep quiet and we'll all be happy. Now, remember, fellas, I want everybody to be on their best thing. Yep! That's him now. <laughs> Stand in attention, everybody. I mean, sit down. I mean, answer the door, Rochester. Yes, sir. Remember what I told you, fellas. Now, smile, everybody. Pardon me. Does Jack Benny live here? Yes, sir. Ready? One, two. For he's a, a jolly, jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow, Mr. Charles E. Mortimer. Hooray! 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 Come, come right in, Mr. Mortimer. Come right in. Well, that was quite a reception you gave me. Did you hear that, fellas? That was quite a reception we gave him. You know, you know everybody here, don't you, Mr. Mortimer? Oh, of course, of course. Glad to see you all. How oh, it's good to have you with us, Mr. Mortimer. Well, 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 to come. Yeah. well, this is great having you with us, Mr. Mortimer. I'm sorry I spoiled your evening at the theater. Oh, that's all right, Jack. I'd much rather be here with you folks. After all, it's important that we get together once in a while. Don't you think? Oh, I think. I mean, I think so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, come, uh, come into the living room, Mr. Mortimer. Thank you. Say, this is a lovely home you have here, Jack. I'm glad you like it. It's... Nearly paid for, too. <laughs> About another year ought to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yup. Yes, sir. Yup. Have some, have some punch, Mr. Mortimer. No, thanks. I never drink. That's not going to help any. I'll say. I mean, Mary, please. Jack, I can't get over what a lovely place you have here. Oh, it's simple, but it's homey. Well... I see you have my picture right above the fireplace. Yes, sir. Tomorrow it'll be in it. <laughs> well, not. You know, Mr. Mortimer, Mary always has to be the comedian. She never lets up. Yeah, she's a clever little girl. Incidentally, Miss Livingston, I want to tell you how much my wife and I enjoy you on the program. Well, thank you, Mr. Mortimer. And I'd like to wish you the best of luck on your presidential campaign. Oh, fine. <laughs> That, look, you're thinking of Gracie Allen, aren't you? Oh, yes. I, I'm terribly sorry, Miss Livingston. That's all right. Forget it. Anyone can make a mistake, I always say. Huh, Mary? Shut up. <laughs> yes, 
Yes, sir. Hey, Charlie, come on over here and have some punch. Charlie? Thanks, Phil, but I never touch it. It's good stuff, Charlie. This is what you call Virginia punch. One drink and you reel. Ha, 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 That's a Lulu. Oh. I, uh... I must apologize for Phil, Mr. Mortimer. He's very corny. No, on the contrary. I think Phil has a great sense of humor. Oh, he has. He has. <laughs> and he's so sophisticated. You know, Mr. Mortimer, sometimes that filthy boy just has me in stitches. Yeah, I can imagine. Say, Charlie, did you hear the one about the old maid that put a bear trap under her bed and caught a bear? <laughs> 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 oh, say, Phil, that's a piss. I was hoping you'd tell that one. <laughs> you know, Mr. Mortimer, he's a riot. He certainly is. Say, Jack. What? If the boss likes that kind of stuff, you've got nothing to worry about. <laughs> Quiet, Mary. You know, Mr. Mortimer, Dennis, stop standing on your head. Nobody's looking at you. <laughs> you know, Mr. Mortimer, uh, Mr... Uh, Mr. Mortimer, you know, one thing about... One thing about this gang, there's no jealousy or friction here. We've been one happy little family for six years. I mean, five years. I was thinking of next year. <laughs> Jack's right, Mr. Mortimer. We do good to have a good time together and really enjoy our work. Well, you always sound like it, too. And, Don, I want to compliment you especially on the way you handle the commercials on our show. Well, thank you, Mr. Mortimer. I realize their importance and how much they mean to our listeners. Oh, I don't know what we do without dear old Don. And now that we're on the subject, Jack, I'd like to tell you how good I think your shows have been this year. Oh, that's very kind of you. Of course, they could have been much funnier. Then why weren't they? <laughs> I mean, I mean... I meany, miny, mo. Mary. <laughs> Will you have a cigar, Mr. Mortimer? No, thanks. I never smoke cigars. Well, then, take one home for your wife. I mean, I mean... I mean... No, I mean she doesn't smoke them either. I know she doesn't. I'm a little mixed up, that's all. Well, I'd like to have a cigarette, though. Cigarette, cigarette, cigarette. <laughs> There you are, Mr. Mortimer. Oh, Dennis. Yes, please. He's such a polite kid. Uh, Dennis, before we sit down to dinner, how about singing a song for Mr. Mortimer? Oh, there's a party. I don't want to work. Now, Dennis. Oh, Jackie doesn't have to sing if he doesn't want to. But he wants to. Well, Dennis, what's it going to be? I'm going to sing nya, 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 nya. Dennis! If that's not a picture of the same name, you're going to get a good coffee. Now, go ahead. Have you a match, Jack? Match? Match, match, match? Oh, here's a box. Here's a box. I like this cigarette for you. Just a second. Just a second. Stop shaking, for heaven's sake. I'm not shaking. Here you are, Mr. Mortimer. There. Sing, Dennis. Sit right here, Mr. Mortimer. Oh, Don, come here a minute. Yes, Jack. Don't forget to ask me to do my train seal later. Yes. <laughs> I want 
Dennis, that was very good, very good. Didn't you think so, Mr. Mortimer? Yes, that was excellent. I'm really having a grand time here tonight, Jack. Yes, aren't you? You know, Mr. Mortimer, Mr. Mortimer, I've been thinking it's so silly of you to stay at a hotel while you're in town. I have an extra room, and you could just as well stay here at the house with me. Eh, Mary? Why not? He can afford it. Mary, I... I wouldn't think of charging Mr. Mortimer, after all. He's my boss, and I hope he will be for a long time. <laughs> now, I think we ought to have a little more entertainment. Eh, Don? Eh, Don? Oh, 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 oh yes. Uh, say, Jack, why don't you give your imitation of a train? A train? <laughs> yes. I do a train seal. Get the ball, Rochester. That's the top to my ball to pull now. Hmm. I won't be able to do my seal act. Oh, well, don't bother about it, Jack. Some other time. Well, I ought to do something to entertain... Uh, excuse me a minute. Of course. You know, Mr. Mortimer, Jack always tries to be a good host and entertain his guests. Yes, I noticed that. But he seems so nervous tonight. Oh, he's always that way. Oh, Mr. Mortimer! Mr. Mortimer, look! How's your party getting along? Yippee! <laughs> well, I'll be darned. He's got the lampshade on. <laughs> How's that, Mr. Mortimer? I was making off like I was drunk. Oh, uh, was that it? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you'd, you'd have got it right away if I'd have staggered. <laughs> I left that out. <laughs> well, here's, here's Mr. Billingsley, our boarder. Good evening, Mr. Billingsley. Ah, uh, good evening, Mr. Benny. Entertaining again, I see. Yes, yes. <laughs> Won't you uh, join us for dinner, Mr. Billingsley? No, thanks. I'm on the wagon. Hey, good night. <laughs> You know, that fellow's quite a character. On him, the lampshade looks good. It does at that. Dinner, sir, there's a lot this time, folks, so don't run. Oh, <laughs> this way, my Mortimer. This way, nothing fancy, just a plain home-cooked meal, that's all. Say, Jack, when are you going to speak to him about your options? Don't bother me now, please. Oh, Mr. Mortimer, the dining room's over here to your left. Yes, I see the boys digging in already. You know, Mr. Mortimer, I have something I want to talk over with you, but I feel that the home is no place to discuss business. I definitely agree with you. Oh. Dead end. <laughs> well, here we are. You sit right there at the head of the table, Mr. Mortimer. Yes, that's it. Oh, Rochester. Yes, boss? You set the table beautifully, but this is a special occasion. Where's the hand-painted china? You fired him. I don't mean our old cook. <laughs> oh, do have some caviar, Mr. Mortimer. Don, pass him that big bowl of caviar, will you? Surely. Here you are, sir. I thank you, but I never eat it. Oh. Well, take it away, Rochester. Take it away. <laughs> now, wait a minute. I want some of that caviar. Oh, no, you don't. Mr. Mortimer finds it offensive. Oh, I don't find it offensive, Jack. I just don't eat it. All right. Take it away, Rochester. <laughs> take it away. What are you going to do? Put it back in the fish? I'm not going to put it back in the fish. I eat hearty, everybody. I hope you like pheasant, Mr. Mortimer. Oh, that's one of my favorite dishes. Good. Gee, it's hot in here. Well, Dennis, take your elbow out of Mary's soup. <laughs> now, come on, everybody. Dig in. Eat, drink, and be merry. Oh, oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> Will you pass me the salt, please, Danny? Yes, sir. Phil, let me have some of that over there, please. Well, I'm glad you're all enjoying the dinner. Pass me the asparagus, Don. Here you are. See, Jack, is everything going to be straightened out about next season? Not yet, Don. This is strictly a social gathering. Well, I'll loosen your belts, everybody. There's still plenty to eat. Will you have some more option, Mr. Mortimer? Uh, I mean, some more asparagus? <laughs> asparagus, Mr. Mortimer, help yourself. No, thanks, Jack. I have plenty right here. Pretty good food, eh, Morty? Morty? Oh, it's grand, Phil. Really delicious. 
Well, eat hearty, folks. It's right here for you. Mr. Benny, would you please pass me the mashed potatoes? Why, yes, I'll... Mrs. Nickel! <laughs> I wish you wouldn't sit at the table. Your place is in the kitchen. Well, I'm lonesome, kid. I don't care if you are. Now, get back there. I'll go with her. You sit down. I'm sorry, Mr. Mortimer, but our cook is new here, and I had to straighten her out. My, but you're jittery today, Jack. I've never seen you act this way before. Well, I... I haven't been feeling very well. Now, here's the whole thing, Charlie. Jack's worried about... Bill, next... I'll handle it. You just mind your own business. Oh, yes, that reminds me. Uh, say, Jack. Yes, please? I mean, what is it? What is it, Mr. Mortimer? There is something I want to discuss with you as soon as we get through eating. There is? Good eating. I mean, good. Well, first we'll have our dessert... And then we'll go into the other room. Oh, Rochester, bring in the coffee and the apple pie. Okay, boss. Apple pie? What's the matter? Apple pie for dessert? Why, what's the... Oh, my goodness, we forgot yellow! <laughs> we forgot yellow! Well, here I go back to the May Company. <laughs> Rochester, you're fired! Get out of this house! What's that? Don Wilson just fainted. Well, get some water, quick! The heck with the water, the heck with everything! I'm gonna kill myself! No, no, wait a minute, Jack, wait a minute. Calm down, it's nothing to worry about. You keep out of this! Oh, pardon me, Mr. Mortimer! <laughs> pardon me, I'm... I'm all excited. No, Jack, take it easy. The whole thing was just an oversight. It could happen to anybody. But I can't understand it, Mr. Mortimer. We always serve America's favorite gelatin dessert in this household. Why, there isn't a day goes by that we don't have some tempting and economical jello in one of its six delicious flavors. And believe me, Mr. Mortimer, I always look for the big red letters on the box. Well, I'm glad to hear you say that, Jack, because it's nice to know that a fellow as loyal as you will be working for me again next year. Next year? Well, thanks, Mr. Mortimer. But wait a minute. How do you know I'm available? <laughs> well, I'll be... So will I. Play, Phil. And now, ladies, if you'd like to add to your reputation as a clever dessert maker, here's something you ought to know about. It's a perfectly swell Maytime dessert, cheerful as sunshine, delicious as fresh, cool spring water. It's a Jell-O dessert, layered cherries and bananas made with Jell-O in any of its three red colors. It's easy to make, and here's what you do. Dissolve one package of your red Jell-O in one pint of hot water. Then seed and cut into halves one cup of canned white cherries. Arrange them on the bottom of a mold and pour the shimmering red jello over the cherries. Slice one banana over the top and chill until firm. And there's a real prize-winning dessert. Rich red jello glowing with vivid color, crisp white cherries held firmly inside, creamy bananas sliced for the final touch, and all combined in a gay mold of tempting beauty. So tomorrow, ask your grocer for jello in one of those bright red colors then try this swell new dessert. Layered cherries and bananas made with jello. This is the last number of the 34th program in the current jello series. And we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. Say, Mary, wasn't it nice of Mr. Mortimer to sign us up for next season? Yes, why don't you celebrate and put the lampshade on again? <laughs> I think I will. Oh, Mr. Mortimer! Yippee! Good night, folks. The part of Mr. Charles G. Mortimer was played tonight by Russell Hicks. Be sure to listen to the Aldrich family heard in most communities every Tuesday night. Consult your local newspaper or radio guide for the day and exact time of the Aldrich family. This is the National Broadcasting Company.